Okay, clap. No, wait, wait. No, no, no. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I was talking about the clapper. No. No. We have a clapper. We have no clapper. Okay, clapper. Three, two, one, action. So the idea for Greg the Magnificent came from uh, me and Umar. We were trying to come up with a topic for what we should do for South by Southwest. And I think there were a few ideas that we threw around, mm -hmm. um, but one that we really liked that really stuck was this idea I had for originally a comedy where everybody picked on him. What caused me to push this kid down? You, you, uh, just nerd. him being him. Yeah. All right. And he found this magic kit that he thought would be a way to get out of these problems. People would come to him and ask for all these really dumb favors, and he would get tired of it and just throw out the kit. And then I gave it to Umar, and I like just did what I, I just made a goosebumps. That's all I really did. I made a Twilight Zone goosebumps. Hold up. Is there a mosquito? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. In the end, yeah, it was good. But yeah. Like, yeah. It was way better than what I had for it, because. Okay. Because you suck. Pretty much. <laughs> So, I've never acted before, and the writers, Nick and Umar, they, um, they didn't give me very many lines, which is fun to play around with. Let me practice my lines. How was that? When we were done reading the script and stuff, we realized that Cameron didn't have that much dialogue, but he was able to convey his character with how he actually... I mean, he didn't do that good of a job. Ian was kind of like holding him up. Um, I love when you get more lines than someone else, but you don't get the recognition that you deserve for, you know, a lead character or maybe supporting. Because, you know, who is supporting who? You never really know about that kind of support. Yeah, that's what happens when you hire a last resort. Yeah. So I really taught them everything that they know. I really tried to focus on teaching them, you know, how to be respectful of the crew and treat them properly. Uh, go clean my toilet! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isn't even your house, I mean, bud. I'll clean it. Go to my house, clean my toilet, and then clean Nick's toilet, too. What are you doing? And then I really wanted to make sure that they understood that this was a PG environment. Fart turned twat. Fart turned twat. Pit fusk. I can't do it anymore! And the last thing, certainly not least, is I wanted them to really understand that you have to take care of the equipment and, and treat it professionally. That's my favorite. <laughs> you know me, <laughs> suck a You know, as directors, we really just had to focus on the cast and crew. What do you call, do you call a supermodel of gonorrhea? Um, staying on top of what they were told to do, just really trying to maintain that tight ship attitude. A quarter pounder with cheese. I don't think we ever lost hope or lost vision of like what we wanted to do in the end. Could you tilt your head at a 30 degree angle? <laughs> uh, actually, I think 32 would be better. 32, yes, yes, yes. That's no, no, that's way too much. As an ah. artist, I'd go with the 35. There was not one moment where we were like, what do we do? Yeah, Nick and Umar had no, no, no idea no, what they're they doing half the time. They didn't have any idea. I need therapy, man. I had it, but I got no money anymore, man. I, I, feel, I feel like the script was this tight. This, Tight. Everything made sense. Really, like, like, Gregory why, Smith. Why would you be like delivering a package? <laughs> like, if there's one thing you want from a lead role, it's uh, less amount of dialogue. The less dialogue, the better. Really, if your audience has no idea what's going on in the film, that's especially when the audience doesn't know who he is or anything about him whatsoever, it's more convincing. Don't you agree? I I would say it is more convincing. Yeah. Well, my education proves otherwise. So. Obviously, you don't you're know what you're talking about. Contradicting yourself right well, now. Well, life is a contradiction. You gotta learn to accept these things. You know, you learn things from acting like that, for example. Uh, well, I'm glad I had this learning experience with you. Well, if you have any more questions, hesitate to ask, okay? We knew that we weren't gonna have that much of a budget, so we worked with what we could, and thankfully we had uh, Misha Hoff here, who's the costume designer for the theater program. Mm -hmm. He has rooms full of amazing outfits. When we came to him with the idea, he knew exactly what to do with it. Yeah. I like the, the costumes. They're pretty well put together. I felt like Edgar Allan Poe and Bill Nye had a baby and it grew up to like 20 years later and just hated the world. And that was a really badass feeling. 
we had kind of looked around before at things like Amazon and Walmart. I think we actually ended up getting the Postman outfit from Walmart. Got to go like a turbo fan. I'm tired of magazines. They front the tons of beans. You totally just messed it up. How do you guys even know that much? I, I don't even know that it. much. What? Other than that, Misha was incredibly helpful yeah. with the costume design. We came to him like when uh, we had, we hadn't even cast Cameron as Greg yet, but we just said, hey, we have two costumes specifically, can you help us out? And he was busy and th with like two other plays and um, he I don't was know just, how he manages. Yeah, all he, of it. he did a great job and he helped us out a lot. Greg, seemed don't. like whatever. Greg, day one, seemed, uh, take one. And have a nice night. <laughs> Damn. I messed up that scene, yeah, I messed up that scene. <laughs> hey man, give me the lunch money. Hey man, got that English paper? A little bit less creepy. Yeah, a little less creepy. Hey man, can I have that poop poop? Poops and cats and 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 poops and cats and
So I was on drugs. <laughs> so I was on drugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. So while we were shooting, I think it was one of the first few days, yeah. we were doing the door scene mm -hmm. where no one gives them the package. Package for you. Before they even opened the door, we had started recording for Cameron to get ready, but I think you and Ian were outside. Yeah, I was monitoring audio because the boom mic was with Ian, and we were just like, okay, you ready? You're, he's like totally in character and stuff. Two, one, action. I guess all you guys heard was a crash. Guys, 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 what happened? Uh, what had happened was, I think Jacob was trying to pass by and kind of see what was going on. Yeah. And I had a mirror that had already been through a lot. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was uh, hanging on the wall by a wire. And Jacob bumped into it and it just smacked the ground and shattered. <laughs> <laughs> They're dead. The set is dead. Action. We hear, oh shit, stop. No. <laughs> I hear a loud break. <laughs> All we heard was like, action. <laughs> Guys, guys, guys. Yeah, it was fun. All right, I'm not sure where the behind the scenes footage is for this, but there's one scene where we, we had like a little whole thing where I like walked past the sign and then stop and like come back to it and you know, all that, write my name in. And we, we didn't use any of that footage, um, but I, I don't think we even were going to use the audio for this. Our, our boom mic guy was just kind of standing around trying to get the audio that wasn't there and and the boom mic fell off of the stick and hit him oh, in the dick <laughs> it was pretty great <laughs> yes it was recording i think my favorite scene to shoot there's two um just the look of how greg was backstage and also the shot that we had in mind from the beginning where Greg is standing in front of the audience and he just holds up the curtain mm -hmm. and there's like the outline of light around him. That was probably my favorite. So I made that into the poster and the yeah. thumbnail and it's everything. It's right on top of Nick's face too. Watching the recording of the crowd scene was interesting because it took forever to get the whole crowd there. It kept getting postponed and we were having problems getting enough people there. It was delayed twice and we just thought we would never have to do it. And we were gonna like end up filming it in like a smaller stage area. And it was just not gonna be as good as it w what it would have been. But, uh, but somehow, our teacher, Mr. McCarran, found a way to like get a bunch of people in the auditorium. I, I was actually sick on, on the day that we filmed that, um, which I think added to the character a little bit more uh, a happy convenience. Um, but it, it also sucked to film because I was sick. And then once we finally got it together, you could tell that it was coming together um, properly. Yeah, it really felt like that whenever it happened, because whenever we were filming it and the curtain dropped, it we knew we were like, yep, okay. It was interesting to see the guys really grow professionally and, and sort of grab a hold of it. I know that they were worried about it and maybe a little nervous because it was such a, a big group that they hadn't dealt with before. Being able to direct like a bunch of people, like it feels it's just a rush. Yeah, Dude, yeah, and having all that control. Tell everybody what to do. Yeah, stick it to them. <laughs> but um, I told them that, that they had nothing to worry about and just to rely on their talent, and that's exactly what they did, and it turned out great. I think after looking back on it all, um, it's just insane to see where we got with this short film. We all put in all the effort we could. Actually seeing just some dumb five minute short film that we made on an actual movie theater screen, it's just been a crazy experience. Dr. Come here. Let's get it happen. The end result of watching like watching the film in the theater was like the, the best payoff. I mean we didn't win. No. But it was, it was that was like enough payoff to, for like making all of it. And just getting to be there, see all the really cool people that are like just as passionate yeah. about wanting to do this. I know this is what I want to do with my life, and so it was, I'm really, I'm trying to think of, think of the word. I'm really grateful that this is, uh, I'm trying to think of a better word, but whatever. I know, I'm really grateful that this is the first film that I've done. Uh, we're definitely going to make a film and then try it again into South by Southwest and see. Keep on keeping on. Yep. It's not going to stop making films. 
never. Never. Ever. I'll be dead. I'll be sitting. I'll be sitting in my coffin, and I'll be like a little skelly bones man. I'll have a super eight strapped to my chest. Nick and Umar had like no, no they idea. Didn't. What I had weeks of therapy, dude. I couldn't even go on after that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>